Hello guys, welcome back to learnautomation.com. This is Mukesh Utwani. So today we are going to uh, start another video series of SOAP UI. So we'll start with this uh, introduction part because if you are going further with SOAP UI, you should know what exactly this web service is. So this total video will talk about what exactly this web service is and uh, what, are, uh, what are the different type of web services present in the market and so on so let me show you what exactly you will get once we are done with this video so today high level agenda is we will talk about what exactly this web service so we have seen different posts and uh, you might have uh, seen so many videos on this what exactly this web service so we'll discuss uh, on it and then we will talk about how it works so before moving into soap ui you should know this client server architecture Actually, we use this in our day-to-day -day life, but we'll see how internally it works. Then we'll talk about what exactly SOAP is. SOAP UI is a separate tool, but what exactly this SOAP is, we will discuss today. Then we'll talk about REST, what exactly this REST is. So this is the uh, four point that we will discuss today. So what exactly this web service is, it is uh, uh, just a technology which will allow you to communicate between different languages and it allow us to pass the different data over the internet in easy way. So take a very simple example, whenever you are logging to your Facebook account, so it sends some data to the server, right? So how it sent the data to a server, it sent through web services. So our main agenda throughout the tutorial series will be we need to pass the data from a client to a server and we need to capture the response. So, uh, in other words, web services provides an easy way to achieve interoperability. Okay, uh, we'll talk about platform dependent and platform independent. So, it will provide you an easy way so that you can uh, interact with multiple application. And while working with web services, it will follow a collection of standard uh, or you can say a set of protocols it will follow to exchange information between two devices over the internet. So now let's say if you're working with multiple layer application, your data has to pass through multiple applications, right? Uh, let's say if you're working with banking domain, so it has to go through multiple application, data will come from a different application and so on. So all we will uh, be achieving this through web services. So now let's take a very basic example. Uh, if you're working with multiple platforms, then it's not uh, necessary that all this, uh, what you can say, application will be built on a same application, sorry, same uh, programming languages. So one application can be built on Java and another application might have built on Ruby and Python ETC. So uh, using web services, you can interact with any uh, programming language. It is not a uh, restriction here that you can only interact with uh, Java and Java application or Ruby with Ruby. So uh, one programming language can interact with another programming language here. So using web services. So term which we will be uh, used here is web service in web services. So you should know some of the terminologies before moving to SOAP UI tutorials. So uh, we will be talking about request and response. So request is nothing but uh, a simple activity from the client side. Uh, so what we do right now, when you launch a browser, you click on a button. So it is just a request from the client. So uh, we will be using this term called request. You will get one more terminology is very frequently called response. A response is again, it's just an activity that is sent by a server based on your client request. So every click or every activity initiated by a client will be known as a request and based on the request, it will hit a server, hit on a server and server will give you a response and now response, we will discuss how many type of response you will get. But these two uh, uh, terms I will be using very frequently. So how this works, so client server architecture. So you will be having uh, browser now let's uh, don't go to the high level let's take a normal activity if you open a browser and let's say if you're watching this video on YouTube so whenever you search anything on YouTube and if you click on search 
So what exactly it does it send a request to YouTube server, right? And YouTube will serve your request and based on your request, it will return you the data that is required. So that will be known as response. Okay, so now if you can see here, right now I'm getting response 200. It means now we'll talk about this 200 word. So actually it is uh, HTTP response code. So code we will talk about uh, in the last slide. I have created uh, five categories of response that you might uh, get once you start working on web services. So right now 200 code code is for OK. Once you get in a proper response, you will get response code is 200. So before moving to SOAP UI, you should know what is SOAP. So you should uh, be knowing the fo full form as well. So SOAP stands for Simple Object Access Protocol. So uh, if you read it again in the last uh, word, it is saying it's a protocol. Okay, and protocol means just set of rule that it has to follow. So SOAP can interact with other programming language applications. As we discussed now, it can interact with any other application. Like if you're working with Java, then Java can interact with Ruby, Python, .NET, etc. And if you see the third line, it is just a protocol which is XML based for accessing web services over the internet. Okay, so we will follow cer certain for protocols and we will be sending some request and we will get some response and based on the response we will verify whether the response is coming as per requirement or not. Okay, and it is recommended by W3C for communication between two applications over the internet. So SOAP UI tool that we are going to cover in future, it support both app web services. One is SOAP Sorry, uh, there was some disturbance. So it is recommended by W3C for communication between two applications over the internet. Okay, so once we move forward, you will get to know SOAP UI will support two type of web services. So we'll discuss about the second type. This is the first type that is SOAP. Now we have some advantage as disadvantage as well for this SOAP. Now SOAP, if you talk about it has its own security called WS security that is uh, web services security and uh, so while working with your, your application you can use soap services while performing uh, interaction with different application and very good thing about uh, soap is it's a language and platform independent okay so uh, this is the two advantage for soap but we have some disadvantage as well so uh, as we discussed if you go to the previous slide we have discussed in the third point it is just a XML based uh, for accessing web services. Don't worry about XML. Uh, we'll talk about in in the part two. As of now, it support only XML format. It means whenever you send a request, you have to send a request through XML format. And once you get the response, you will get response in a form of XML only. So uh, it has many standard that we need to follow while working with SOAP UI so that uh, so that is the main reason it is slow because we cannot move beyond SOAP because uh, sorry we cannot move beyond its standard which it follow. So uh, you will see we'll talk about REST, uh, REST having much flexibility and it is faster than SOAP. Now if you talk about second disadvantage, uh, it works with WDS file only. So don't worry about this term WSDL, we'll discuss in the part two. So it works with WSDL file only. So it does not support other format like JSON, header, cookies, and so on. So again, you might have heard of these terminologies called JSON, header, cookies. But if not, then definitely we are going to cover in the upcoming uh, videos. So as of now, we discussed uh, what is SOAP. Sorry, this let me cover this. SOAP is just a simple ac object access protocol. It supports multiple languages and platform. And it is just a protocol which is based on XML for accessing web services over the internet. And it is recommended by W3C for communication between two applications over the internet. We discussed some advantage of uh, SOAP that it having some security format that is called as WS security. So while working with secure application, you can use SOAP. And it's a language and platform independent. So, but it has some disadvantage as well as we discussed support only XML format. Plus it has to follow certain standard which make it slow and uh, <coughs> it doesn't 
uh, work with any other format it works only with the WHDS file so now we have restful web services also in the market so uh, what exactly it is it is uh, stand for representation state transfer it is again a platform independent okay so uh, you will see like restful is most uh, you can say most widely used because it support multiple format like you can get the request and response in a form of json html xml and plain text file too it is faster as compared to so because it does not have to follow a standard protocol okay and because it is uh, not a protocol like soap it is just a architecture design so it is much faster than soap plus it support multiple format like json html xml plain file platform independent okay so uh, once you move forward you will get to know restful is more more uh, you can say widely used um, over the development but it totally depends on your requirement whether you have to test restful web services or soap web services since we are uh, automation engineer we are not going to see how it is has been implemented but we will get these type of web services and based on the web services we need to do some activity we need to capture the response and we will see how to capture all this so as of now I am assuming everyone is clear with what is web services what is soap web services what is restful web services now before moving to the part two you should know some of the terminologies so uh, we already discussed about uh, two terminologies called request and response so response will be having some codes okay so uh, you will find this response in five categories so one access x means if you get any code in the hundred range so it will be like information based it means it will give you some information about your request now the mostly used is uh, 200 so if you find any response code in uh, 200 to 299 category so it will be uh, it will come under success category so 200 if you go to my previous slide we have one code called 200 right it means the response is coming okay it means it has successfully responded our response sorry request so now you will find another category called 3xx it means it will give you like information about redirection so one very basic example about redirection if I type www.google.com it will redirect me to www.google.co.in so this type of response code you will get like 301 302 and so on so I will show you this code don't worry uh, I have a very good link that is uh, wiki link and you will get all this code and I'm sure everyone must aware of 404 right page not found everyone has faced this issue so whenever you get uh, 403 it means site is down forbidden gap forbidden error so the response code will be 403 so any code which is falling under 400 range it will be uh, from the client side error okay and the last one is the 5xx category so whenever you're getting any response code in this category like 501 502 so these responses uh, will actually tell you that there's some issue with the server side and before uh, jumping into part two let me show you this response code if you type uh, http status codes you will get this wiki link that is very good you will find some uh, sorry code call 100 100 indicate continue 101 switching protocols 102 processing this is the widely used 200 ok created accepted non-authorized information so on so if you're getting 301 it means moved permanently found see uh, not modified and so on so this is the one which we face uh, most often like unauthorized payment required forbidden page not found so we will be uh, using this code to verify our output and don't worry about the status code because we are not going to use all status code but yes what is required for SOPOE I will be showing you one by one 
and last that is server error like whenever you are getting 500 error it means internal server error nothing from the client side but server having some issues so okay so once you have time just go through all this uh, status code that we are going to use inside our soap ui so uh, that's all for this i hope everyone now familiar with what's what is web service what is soap what is rest what is the response code and uh, how we are going to use the response code so in part two we'll see like how to install soap ui and uh, what are the features of soap ui plus how we can create our first project first test suit first test case and how we can start uh, validating our response so if you have any doubt just drop me an email and you can visit my blog if you need more information uh, thanks for watching this video have a nice day